This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. 94% of CIOs and CISOs agree that attracting and retaining talent is increasingly critical to their roles. ACI Learning empowers your team to thrive while investing in the security of your business. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com slash twit for information on a free two-week trial for your team. So a guy named Matt Holt wrote a nice little web server in the Go language. He calls it Caddy Server, you know, as in Caddyshack, Caddy Server, and describes it as an extensible cross-platform open source web server written in Go. The name Caddy refers to both a helper for tedious tasks, you know, like, you know, someone carrying someone's golf clubs, uh, and a way to organize multiple parts into a simplified system. Okay, so we've established that Matt knows his way around web server technology. He was experimenting with ACME, which is, as we know, the protocol created by the EFF's Let's Encrypt project to automate the issuance of TLS certificates. You know, the idea being that it allows the server to proactively ask a certificate authority to please refresh its cert because under the Let's Encrypt model, certificates only last 90 days, so you want to automate that process so that you're not having to do it constantly. Okay, a low-budget Chinese certificate authority named Hi CA, H, capital H, lowercase i, capital C, capital A, Hi CA, only supported one particular Acme client. Oh, that's suspicious. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> for for its customers servers right because if it's an open protocol and it is it should not matter matt found this odd just as you did leo you know um now this this client this one particular acme client is open source and it's over on github as acme.sh so here's a bit about here's a bit of what matt wrote he said hi ca's documentation that is the documentation, you know, with this certificate authority explains that it only as a client. This was curious to me, so I tried to learn why. Uh, if it's using Acme, and this is the thing that really got him, the Acme logo, it should be basically compatible with the majority of Acme clients. While observing a certificate using Acme's I discovered that the discovery was blocked. And this is like details of the protocol we won't get into because you'll get the gist of this. The discovery was blocked unless the user agent is set to a string that starts with Mozilla or acme.sh slash 2.8.2. Once I faked the user agent in my own client and got that working, certificate issuance still failed. Curiously, the error message involved trying a URL of dot dot, meaning, you know, backup in a hierarchy, dot dot slash PKI hyphen validation. This doesn't make any sense to me, even though that kind of appears in their docs because it's not standard ACME. So I dug a little deeper to figure out what the challenge object consisted of that would cause my client to be making a request to dot dot backslash pki hyphen validation it turns out that the challenge object looks unusual and it became immediately obvious to me why hi ca only supports acme.sh they are not conforming to acme at all and he says parens bugs the heck out of me that they're using the official Acme logo on their site, even though they don't implement the Acme standard. And he says, instead, high CA, you're sitting down, Leo, high CA is stealthily crafting curl commands <laughs> and, pipe, and pi piping the output to bash <laughs> at Acme SH is what being could tricked possibly into go wrong? <laughs> oh acme.ch is being tricked into 
running arbitrary code oh. on the remote server. Oh. Okay, so let me <laughs> let me make that a bit clear and fill in additional details. So a small Chinese certificate authority requires their clients, their users, you know, their customers, to only run a specific Acme.sh Acme client, specifically because this particular open source client has a bug which the CA has been exploiting to cause their clients' web servers, their customers' web servers, to remotely execute arbitrary code and commands on their own servers. Oh, my God. Wow. Now, obviously, no one should ever run code, meaning Acme clients, that they don't trust on their servers. And if some certificate authority tells you that they support Acme, but only one specific Acme client, you know, even if their certificates are free, run away as fast as you can. <laughs> so this is probably the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese government. Oh, Leo, it's a up. plot. Mike, hoping, they're trying to take over our children. No, yes. but they're hoping that some, you know, foolish industrial enterprise will use the <laughs> server so they can keep an eye out, right? I mean, I don't think it's hackers. It's probably the government, but who knows? No, right? well, from based on the die, I read the GitHub thread discussion. The guy behind this high CA uh, got involved when this became a controversy, and he appears to be benign and good-hearted but then of course if it was actually the evil commies then you know he would uh he explained that doing this allowed him to have more uh flexibility oh you yeah betcha. oh now, yeah uh and uh if he's, he's able to run whatever code that he wants on your server that's flexible uh the it could acme be benign. it could really be just some yes kid, yes right? you know I think it was I think it was just he saw a bug and he decided to use it. The Acme.sh maintainers immediately fixed the bug that this high CA guy was exploiting for their service and high CA shut down and closed its doors. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, it was, he was affiliated with some other CA. Okay. He wasn't it was it was not quite free, but it was like three dollars and twelve cents or something. So you know, he wasn't making a lot of money and he said, okay, fine. I'll just stop this because this isn't fun anymore. Yeah. But still, you know, everybody who was using his certs was having his code running on their Shimony computers. Christmas. So it yeah. wasn't the server. It was a certificate authority. Yes. The certificate authority ha has a, so, so he the, found a the, bug. The, I get it. He found a bug in the server that he was able to ex uh, exploit. I get it now. Yes. Yeah. yeah he, he, he found a bug in the acme.sh client. Right. So, so, so they, his, his customers had to run by his instruction, the acme.sh yeah. client in order to you to, to get the certs from him. And the way they were getting them from him is he was saying, okay, you want a, a new update? Let me get, I'm going to run a little code in sure. your server in order to make that sure. happen. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? And we never saw a malicious attack from no, him. No, no. So maybe he no. was completely uh, benign. Right. I think so. But again, this is the way we keep these things from, you know, escalating. Yes, so. exactly. And bravo. Uh, yeah. To what's his name, uh, Matt, Matt Holt, for for finding yep. this and and yep. and writing it up, and use Let's Encrypt, please. Just use Let's exactly. Encrypt. Why <laughs> do anything else? Use yeah. the one everybody uses that ever that's been vetted yeah. and had you know real security people you know writing it, maintaining it. I I I don't get the need for additional Acme clients, but again, we're, we're you know it's open, it's everything's open and it should be, but. You know, it does not prevent bad ones from being written. And, you know, you know, I see some cars, Leo, with that have been painted a color that should not have been allowed <laughs> to leave like the garage. Cars, forget it. We've got Victorian houses painted that way up here. <laughs> oh. Fluorescent. Oh, so, yeah. If they build it, somebody, somebody will use will it. Somebody will use it. Oh. Yeah.